What's up guys, Late Night Cast Mac here. Uh, wild, wacky day of postseason baseball. The bye teams are struggling a little bit again. The Cleveland Guardians are uh, riding a 20-inning scoreless streak with the Gritty Tigers and their pitching chaos uh, and working into perfection. A.J. Hinch is pressing every button. Everybody's executing the two-out magic with the two-out RBIs. Riley Green with um, an RBI single in the first. Matt Vierling uh, with a sack fly in the sixth. Um, and Spencer Torkelson with the, a double in to get the third run. Also, uh, the Cleveland Guardians had first and second um, two outs or first and second no outs four times. And Matt Vierling was the villain as in the eighth, David Fry smoked one to Veerling and he made the leaping catch, climbing the ladder, the pogo stick, and um, that was that was it for Cleveland. They haven't pitched bad, but they haven't been able to get that big hit since the first inning of of game one where they exploded. But everything is coming up uh, roses for the Tigers right now, and you can't not love it. It's it's weird it's amazing it's unconventional but it all works jake rogers has been um the catalyst for most of their rbis in in the postseason when right before the carrie carpenter um walk off, or game winning blast against class a they were over their last 23 with runners on base so there's something in the water magically in Detroit and they keep riding that magic carpet to a two to one lead. We'll, we'll see what happens um, tomorrow. And then will Cleveland bust out or will the gritty Tigers hang them down and be clutch again? Who knows? But it's it's a fun matchup and a fun fun ride for them. Mets Ride the magic carpet ride to the NLCS. Uh, the big um, key in this series was the fact that the Phillies bullpen had an 11.37 ERA, the worst ERA for a postseason team since 1999. Cleveland, then Indians, I believe I read that. And they just could not get a clean inning, one, two, three, easy breezy from. Uh, from their bullpen at all, uh, and I thought their bullpen was solid throughout the year, but maybe I, maybe I overestimated it or, or something. Obviously, the, the strikeout bug bit them, and the layoff probably played factor, uh, as it has for a lot of teams. But I mean, the Mets so many clutch at bats, so many two strike hits, and Francisco Lindor doing MVP things every single time and the Phillies up one to nothing after escaping bases loaded twice and first and second twice with one out through five innings it felt like a pipe that was about to burst and then Jeff Hoffman who got out of the first and second one out jam in the fifth uh or no out jam in the fifth rather came back out and just didn't have it again. He didn't really have it the entire series. The eighth inning in game one kind of blew up on him. It was just one of those things that it was a little bit surprising that their pitching struggled as much as they did. It's not not necessarily something I've seen. Like the Guardians pitching has been solid. They just haven't got the big hit, kind of like the Braves the last couple of years. So the pitching was more effective, weirdly, for the Phillies. I mean, yes, they didn't score enough, and they were way too antsy against Quintana. He was just trying to get them to fish, and a lot of times they did. Um, it was somewhat, somewhat surprising that they were that antsy, but not obviously because it was an elimination game. But Francisco Lindor with one out in the sixth, Bases loaded against Carl Estevez. I was surprised they didn't show 
uh, Lindor a breaking ball at all. They just peppered him with fastballs, and he got a meatball and did not miss it for the Grand Tour. And that was the final blow for the Phillies, even though they did get first and second. Uh, no outs when Edwin Diaz decided to walk the ballpark um, and make it interesting. Um, but then he found it and blew 101 um, by Kyle Schwarber um, to eliminate them. So I can't say I'm sad, but it was like uh, choosing lesser of two evils. But the Mets' magic is undeniable right now, and we'll see. Um, they'll have a little bit of time off, so we'll see if that affects them at all or they continue to ride this hot streak. Mark Vientos is the real deal, at least offensively. Hit some bugaboos defensively, but they were able to overcome it. I, I It's just fantastic what they've done, and I got to tip my cap and give them credit because it's insane. <laughs> um, so good for them, but I will be rooting for an AL team or the Padres. Sorry, Mitts. Um, but, and then we got the Yankees and Royals. Uh, the Yankees come up big, 3-2 to two, uh, against uh, Seth Lugo. The problem for the Royals' entire pitching staff this series has been walks, um, and Giancarlo Stanton coming up huge, a walk to Soto, and a two-out double by Stanton. Um, got him on the board, and then um, in the fourth uh, single walk, uh, sack bunt by uh, Verdugo and then a sack fly to make it 2 to nothing, and then the Royals were able to come back with infield single uh, double and then a triple by Massey to tie it in the fifth but and then Giancarlo Sting came up with the big stick 3-1 pitch from Bubich and he absolutely demolished it uh, to make it 3-2 to two. Luke Weaver, awesome. Um, five out saves. It hasn't worked out for a lot of the closers, um, but maybe since he's not tradi a traditional closer, it's not it's not gotten in his head, and it's worked out big time. Five outs. He did get a really nice play from uh, Volpe on a soft line drive that looked like it was ticketed up the middle in the eighth or the ninth rather, the eighth rather, and uh, he was able to corral that, so that was nice. Bobby Wood Jr. did get on the hit board, but uh, you're going to need more, but their pitching staff has got to stop walking so many, even though they only gave up three runs, and that's impressive. You just can't, uh, you got to make the base runners earn it, and they haven't for the most part, but still got a really good chance, even though Seth Lugo tried to be eff effectively wild, but just it didn't work out. Uh, so Yankees up 2-1 to one there, and then the Dodgers force a game five with a convincing largest shutout in their postseason history. Mookie Betts has found it, a homer in the first off Dylan C. short rest. Uh, Dylan Cease wasn't good in game two, and he was not good tonight, and it kind of just got the wheels going. Um, Shohei Otani, RBI single, and then a, uh, RBI single right after that to make it 3 nothing. and Will Smith and Gavin Lux with two run bombs to make it 8 nothing. and the bullpen game was absolutely perfect. For Dave Roberts, every uh, they the Padres just couldn't get anything going early. Everything they had was with two outs, but uh, they were able to put out the fires and not cause chaos like they had been in the early innings. Uh, their entire playoff run so far, so we'll see uh, if Hugh Darvish can replicate uh, his performance um, in. As he did in game two, we will see. But uh, go baseball, uh, go Braves. As always, go Braves, go baseball. Uh, this postseason has been insane. A lot of trends we've seen before, but uh, the Yankees and Dodgers are trying to buck the buy trend. So we will see how that plays out. 
and see if the Guardians can get on the board early and uh, force it back to Cleveland, even though their prize would to face Terrence Schoolbull. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we will see. Hopefully we get some comebacks and some magical baseball tomorrow. But hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, helps it a lot. Thanks, guys.